I get chills every time I see the Wendy sign with the little girl on it. I know that sounds weird, but you'll probably feel the same by the time I'm finished. It's all because of this one time back in the 80s, when I would still go there. The Wendy's by my old neighborhood was one of the really old locations, where they didn't even have the girl on the sign, just the black and yellow poster with old-fashioned hamburgers in big letters. But of course, everyone already recognized the trademark big smile and red pigtails. And that was the whole reason I went to Wendy's. Just about every day on my walk home from school, I'd go a couple blocks out of my way just to pass by and see if a certain someone was working that day. And when she was, I'd always go inside for my usual order. It's been 40 years since those days, but I remember every detail about her. She worked at the register most days of the week, and she was sure the face of the business. She looked as close to the cartoon of the red-headed girl as anyone ever could, but as a fully grown woman. 17-year-old me couldn't get enough of her. I cherished every moment of small talk I could manage, and it made my every day just to know that she recognized me. We even had a little rapport going. Hey there, Jack. How are you today? I'm doing just fine now. Now that I'm out of school, I mean. And will it be your usual order again? Number one, no tomato? You know me so well. She must have been five or six years older than me, but I didn't care. I fantasized, I'll admit it. I started looking forward to going there to get me through the tougher days at school. I definitely didn't tell any of my friends about it though. I swear I wasn't planning anything weird, it's just teenage boys are passionate, you know? But anyways, I got familiar with the routine so I was quick to notice when something was out of the ordinary. There was one day that I almost didn't go in because of the long line of customers waiting at the register, but then I saw the red hair. I got to the back of the line, and through all the grumbling of impatient customers, I was able to see and hear an argument between the girl and her boss in pretty clear detail. You're late, again! Don't you see how many customers are backed up? It wasn't my fault! I got stuck in traffic! You expect me to believe that garbage for the fifth time this month? Do you understand how many customers I watch walk out while you left the registers unstaffed? Do you understand how much money you're making me lose? I can't afford for you to keep this up. Why can't you get someone else to run the register, huh? Why don't you do it? You're so out of touch. You'd run these people out the door with your attitude. I keep them coming back. Oh, please. It's all in your looks. You don't do a thing I couldn't. I'm about to quit if I don't get some respect. I'll take that as your two weeks notice unless you get to work. From that point on, I couldn't tell what happened. They quieted down too much to be heard, probably on purpose. But the line got moving eventually. And after a while of waiting, I finally got up to the front. She looked like she had had a crappy day, so I did my best to cheer her up. Hey, don't quit, okay? Or I won't get to hang out with you anymore. Oh, don't worry. I was bluffing. I can't quit. I'm too broke. Well, I've got just enough money to keep buying these burgers until I get your number. Hmm, maybe you'll get that with your first burger as an adult. Okay, kiddo? Hey, that's coming sooner than you think. Number one, no tomato, please. But unfortunately, that was the last day I saw her. Well, the last day I spoke to her. I came by the very next day. The first thing I noticed was that they'd updated their sign to have the Wendy's girl. I thought it looked alright and pretty accurate, but I didn't really see why it was necessary. Regardless, I went inside without looking, while I preloaded a joke about how she finally made it big or something. But when I entered, she wasn't there. Somebody else was at the register, her boss. I stood in line anyway just to ask, Hey boss man, where's Wendy? Place your order please. Uh, okay. I didn't order anything. I just walked out without a word. I didn't like Wendy's food that much. I just came through for the girl. I figured she quit, which admittedly stung a little. Despite that, I continued to walk by every day the rest of the week, just to take a peek inside and see if she was working again. I never did see her behind the register, but I did notice something else. That sign, the one I thought they'd upgraded, it seemed a little off. Day by day, it changed, shifting slightly, warping, slipping, changing in color, and then, in one world-shattering moment, it dawned on me. The face was only on one side, 
And it was not the official Wendy's mascot. It was her. The girl disappeared at the same time the face appeared on the sign. And the more I looked, the more obvious it became that it was no cartoon. As I stood there, jaw dropped to the floor, I swear I saw it slip down another inch or two, becoming clearly lopsided. The smile got cut by a wrinkle in the skin, turning it into a desperate soulless frown. My memory of the following few months is pretty spotty. I suffered a mental breakdown in that moment that I didn't recover from until I'd spent a few weeks in a psych ward. Though I do remember a few details from the court case, which was the talk of the town for a long time. It was her boss that killed her, all because she showed up late to work a few times. And he thought she'd attract just as many customers up there as she did behind the register when she was still alive. Always show respect to the people working in food service, especially in fast food. You never know what they're going through. That's something my parents always told me, but I still had to learn it myself to get it to stick. Though it didn't take long into adulthood before that happened. It was several years ago now, and my girlfriend and I were in the process of moving in together. Unfortunately, the movers had shown up many hours late, then drove off with all our stuff in their truck around 11 p.m with the promise that they'd be back the next day. Since we didn't have any groceries to cook, we opted out for fast food. The Wendy's in our old neighborhood was always of stand-up quality, so we decided to check out the one a couple blocks from our new home. On the surface, it was a little outdated, but extremely clean. Cleaner than any fast food establishment I'd ever seen before. As we ordered our food, I noticed something strange. Their customer service was fine, but... The employees looked really tired, like they might pass out from exhaustion at any moment. Usually the fast food kitchen is a fast-paced environment, with people on the move, yelling out orders and whatnot. But inside this kitchen, nobody moved from their post even an inch, and nobody spoke to each other, causing this eerie silence. Despite all that, our food came out quickly, and I was glad for it. Seeing their weary faces just reminded me of how tired I was. My girlfriend was also excited. Sure enough, the food was alright by my standards. My girlfriend, however, didn't get as lucky. Just a few bites in, and her face suddenly twisted with disgust. She dropped her sandwich and reached into her mouth. Ew! There's a hair in my sandwich! Uh, I rolled my eyes and sighed deeply. I knew her appetite had been spoiled. We were both in a bad mood, so even though we both knew better, it felt like this was just one more thing that had been done to us to make our day worse. My girlfriend was always too shy to ever return food at a restaurant or ask for a refund for anything. And to be real, I was usually the same way. But on this day, I was fed up. And more than that, I wanted to show out for my girlfriend. Since I hadn't been able to do anything about the movers, I'd at least like to make a stand to make sure she was fed right. So I fished the receipt out of the bag and stormed up to the counter once more. The employee at the register said nothing, as he stared through me with soulless eyes. Excuse me, sir, but I found a hair in my food. I'd like a refund. Immediately, <gasps> his eyes flared to life with a traumatized look of anxiety. It really caught me off guard. I was expecting resentment and annoyance, not fear. If you like a refund, I'll have to get my manager. Are you sure you don't want this, sir? Um, yeah. Do what you gotta do, man. We're not hungry anymore. The kid didn't leave the register. Just pushed a few buttons, then looked back at me with a clenched jaw. Only a few moments later, the manager revealed herself from the back. She waddled toward the counter, swinging her hips around on bowed legs. She was morbidly obese, as if she ate Wendy's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, day in and day out. Though she was clearly middle-aged, her face had a lot of acne due to the grease in her diet. And her hair was pale red and wispy thin, desperately braided in a lopsided pigtails. Apparently at some point in this woman's past, she looked like the girl on the Wendy's sign. 
But at this point, she was clearly holding on to a dream that had withered and died decades ago. I'm terribly sorry about the issue with your food, sir. You said it was a hare? What has my father's restaurant come to? This used to be such a fine establishment. But don't worry, sir. I'll get this straightened out right away. She turned away without giving me time to respond. Now, which one of you sorry strays left one of your mangy, rotten hairs in this fine man's food, huh? Many of them darted their eyes away from her, shooting glances at me that read like pleas for help mixed with hexes on my entire family. I tried to step a little closer and say something to her that might bring her back to the counter, but that's when I noticed something that put me at a total loss <gasps> for words. The employees were chained to their workstations by the ankles, with little handcuffs that blended in with all the polished stainless steel in the kitchen. I realized why they all looked so dead tired. They literally couldn't leave. And that's when the Wendy found her culprit, a fry cook who'd let a single lock of hair slip out from under his hairnet. Oh, so it came from your sickly little mop, did it? You like your hair, do ya? You just want to let it all hang out, is that right? Well, let me help you set it free. She struck the poor kid across the face, then kicked out his knees, sending him to the floor. <coughs> she grabbed him by the neck and pulled him up to his knees. Holding him there, she took a clump of his hair and ripped it right out of his scalp. <coughs> The poor boy screamed helpless in agony. The woman ripped off another fistful of hair and dropped it to the floor. She ripped out clump after clump until the boy was almost bald. <laughs> then, she dropped him like a rag doll. She started to walk back to the counter, out of breath, with hair still stuck in the sweat of her palms. Did you want a refund? Instead of responding, I turned right around and rushed to the table. My girlfriend was already on the phone with 911. I took her by the hand and led her outside, where we waited for the police to arrive. Within half an hour, that wretched woman was in handcuffs all her own, getting squeezed into the back of a squad car. These days, my girlfriend and I have since gotten married, and as we look forward to starting a family, we know that one of the first lessons we'll teach our kids is to never make complaints about fast food, and we'll never let them work in it either. There's a Wendy's in my neighborhood that I used to frequent. My friends and I would go there after school on Fridays or late at night after long days of hanging out. The convenience and the affordability of Wendy's just hit a special spot for the kind of people we were, but we don't go there anymore. We find ourselves laughing about a lot of unfortunate things, but even we don't really find this funny. Late one Saturday night, I was coming home alone from my friend's house. We all decided to skip the Wendy's that day since we'd been eating there a lot recently. But after hanging out for so many hours, I was really in the mood for some food. On top of that, I was almost too intoxicated to drive, so sitting in a drive through for a few minutes seemed both relaxing and rewarding. Wendy's drive throughs are usually open till about 2 a.m., but I distinctively remember that around this time they'd started closing earlier due to health and safety measures, so when I pulled in at around 1.45 and saw that they were still open, I was a little surprised, but to be honest, my mind was so clouded that it didn't raise any alarm bells whatsoever. I was just excited to eat. There was only one other customer there, a van at the intercom placing their order. I pulled in behind them and only had to wait a few seconds before moving up. Hi there, welcome to Wendy's. How may I take your order? Um, <laughs> I'll just have a four for four double stack with the Dr. Pepper. Absolutely, and you're sure that's all you want? I can give you a lot more for just a little extra. Um, no, just the four for four is good. Thank you. The banter struck me as odd. Not only had I never heard of a fast food worker be in such a good mood 15 minutes before the end of their shift at 2 in the morning, but I'd also never been solicited to pay for more like that. But like I said, 
I was quite out of it at the time, so I didn't care. When I drove around the corner, the van from earlier was at the second window, waiting to pick up their food. I rolled to a stop right in front of the first window, the one you pay at when it's busy, but that's usually closed. I was once again caught off guard when the window slid open, revealing the hottest girl I'd ever seen since my school got shut down. Not only was she hot, but she looked exactly like Wendy herself, with the red hair and pigtails and everything, except she was wearing a mask, so I couldn't see most of her face. Despite that, I was certainly captivated by what I could see, and her voice was just so hypnotizing. Hey there, kiddo. The customer in front of you just ordered a lot of food, so if you want, I can take your payment here to speed things up, if you're paying by card. Sure, thanks. I handed her my debit card without much of a thought. I probably would have done just about anything, she asked. She kept the window open so I could see her out of the corner of my eye. A few seconds later, another van pulled in behind me that looked just like the one in front of me. I thought it was weird since I hadn't seen or heard the girl take their order, but before I could wonder for very long, she came back to the window brandishing my card. I'm sorry, sir, but it seems like there's a problem with your card. The system says it won't accept payment without the PIN. Do you think you could reach over and punch it in? I'm really sorry, but I can't pull the keypad away very much. You might have to open your door. Oh, don't sweat it, sweetheart. It's no problem at all. I cracked open my door and put one foot out onto the pavement reaching through the windows and trying to punch in the four digits with a totally outstretched arm. That's when the vans on either side of the car unfolded with several masked men. I saw them in my peripheral vision for a second. Then they rushed over to me and made their move. My door got slammed onto my foot, jamming it painfully between the metal. I turned to face the one who'd slammed my door just to get struck in the back of my head with a hammer or something. My vision quickly faded as I felt my body clatter to the ground. When I came to, I'd been thrown into a ditch right next to the Windies. My car was gone. All the lights in the Windies wore off and nobody was around. Everything I owned had been in my car. My phone, my backpack, my wallet. Literally everything except the clothes off my back and my debit card. The girl at the register should have held on to it, so I decided to knock on the window. But nobody answered. Very soon, the realization dawned on me that she'd been distracting me with her looks and her personality, while those crooks in the van waited for the perfect opportunity to relieve me of my vehicle. And if that wasn't enough, by the time I'd walked home in the dead of night, and told my parents what had happened. She'd already emptied out my checking account. My head was pounding and my vision was still blurry, resulting in a hospital visit. After all of that, my friends and I no longer go to the local Wendy's. However, that didn't stop us from traveling a few blocks down to the other Wendy's location, which was still just as good. As unfortunate as the situation was, I'm lucky to have gotten out of it alive and with all of my organs. But what still gets to me is how I've seen reported incidents still occurring at multiple Wendy's drive throughs till this day. Like the story of a prankster tossing an alligator through a drive through window, or a homeless man slashing a large knife at the window because the worker refused to give free food. Either way, I always recommend keeping your doors or windows locked, whether you're outside or behind the glass. James grabbed a roughly three and a half foot alligator on the side of the road, picked it up, got it in his truck, brought it to this Wendy's behind us, and just hurled it through that drive through window. Before the man had asked for free food, but when the Wendy's worker reached into his own pocket, the man got agitated and started making slashing motions on the drive through's window glass. 